I also hope to talk live with Purdue head coach Gene Cady a bit later on, unless Gino's gotten the big head now that they've won the big hardware and won't come on with us. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the regions where Purdue and IU will be going. Troy, first of all, as we put up the southeast region, Purdue gets the number one seed. What do you think about this region here? Can Purdue come out of this? Well, I, I think they can. Uh, Purdue got exactly what they want. They got the number one seed. They got the location. So there's no more excuse why they can't go any further in the tournament. Again, the location, Lexington, Kentucky, their first game March 17th against the 16th seed, Central Florida. Who else do you like in here? Kansas, obviously. Well, I think Providence is playing a, a very good basketball. They w came out and won the Big East tournament this weekend, so they're going to be a tough opponent for Purdue in the second round. And obviously, you got to contend with Kansas because of uh, Roy Williams and how the way he coaches. Okay, let's look at the rest of it right now, and we will go on and show you exactly you got Duke there at the two seed, exactly where IU is going to be headed. Now, IU did not finish the season with the great run that Purdue had, but they still got a big, uplifting victory on senior night over Wisconsin on Saturday at Assembly Hall. And, Dave, I'd like you to step in and give us your opinion on uh, what the Hoosiers can expect in Landover, Maryland, March 18th is their first game, and Ohio U. Ball State fans very well, uh, well aware of the Bobcats and Gary Trent. And playing a MAC team in the first round is always a difficult thing. Ball State's had pretty good success when they've gone into the tournament. Uh, Troy mentioned location for Purdue. Location for Indiana is a problem since they haven't won a game outside the state of Indiana this year. And uh, Indiana does not know what to expect going into this tournament. I talked to assistant coach Norm Ellenberger yesterday, and he says they're just they're really unsure of what they've got. They play well at home. They struggle on the road, and they've had some really decisive losses this year. Okay, we're going to take a lot closer look at IU and what they're up against coming up in our next segment. But we really want to focus on the Boilermakers here off the top tonight because they did win their first Big Ten championship today. They knocked off by Illinois at Mack Arena. Glenn Robinson with 49 points. Let's go up to South Bend on the satellite. Coach McLeod, thanks for taking time to be with us. And Glenn Robinson, I mean, this guy is about as good as it gets. And I would imagine when you have a player of his caliber in the tournament that can really make the difference, particularly in those queasy games that all top seeds are bound to get into. Well, that's true because you need a player like Robinson who can take the last shot or if he doesn't have a shot, can make a shot out of uh, something that's not there. He has that one-on-one -on -one ability. He can drive the ball to the basket. He can shoot the ball outside or he can offensive rebound. So he brings a lot of things to the table which are important at the end of a big game. Troy Lewis, you were talking about when you first heard how great Glenn was, you went over there and worked out with the guys. You wanted to see firsthand. What did you find out? Well, I found out he was all of that. I mean, he can do it all. Like uh, Coach McLeod said, he can create his own shot. He's able to penetrate and get guys open. And I think that's his biggest asset is to carry a team and to hit that last second shot. Coach McLeod, you've been around big time basketball, not only the NBA, but the major college <laughs> ranks for years and years. How does Glenn Robinson stack up in your mind against the other the all-time greats, those guys who come along once a decade. Well, he is no doubt a, a, a big-time basketball player. The, the most impressive thing to me is that he does it against different types of defenses, and as, we, as, as we've seen, as Purdue goes through the end of the season and the games get bigger, he continues to lift his game up, and that's what you'd like to see your best player do, to raise his level, and he is doing that, and I would assume as they get into the NCAA, that he'll continue to do the same thing. Real quickly, if you can, from a coaching standpoint, if you had to take Purdue on, how would you attempt the defense, the big dog? Well, uh, you know, you get to a point where you, you hope that he shoots outside shots. Uh, he does have the ability, as I said, to create. And uh, when he creates, he breaks the defense down. People run to him. He kicks the ball to other people on Purdue's team. And Purdue has the ability to respond to that and shoot the ball effectively. So the best thing to do would be not to let him have the basketball, but he's so <laughs> fluid and moves so quickly that that's hard to do. But after he gets the ball, if he does put it down, which he would, I would run at him. I would double team him every time I have a chance and try to get the ball out of his hands mm -hmm. and limit the number of field goal attempts that he has in hopes that you can also keep him off the free throw line. Yeah. Okay, we'll get back to you in a second, but how is all this playing in West Lafayette? To find out, let's go live to Ken Tomas. You're standing by courtside at Mac. You're in, and Ken, I can only assume that West Lafayette is bonkers over the boilers tonight. Fill us in. Absolutely, as they have been all season long, Ed. You know, they really earned this number one seed, winning nine of their last ten in their last five in a row. 
And yes, they did get some help by some uh, key teams losing the last couple of days, but they are deserved number one. But that also, with that comes the fact you have to play the number 16 seed, which may seem easy because no number one seed has ever lost to a 16 seed, but the 16 seed can come in with no pressure at all, as the University of Florida Central Knights do as well. Gene Cady doesn't worry about the pressure of being number one. Doesn't even look at the rest of the bracket anymore, as I asked him in his press conference just a short time ago. He's not worrying about maybe playing Providence, Alabama in the next round, or maybe Kansas in the in the regional final. No, he doesn't even worry about that stuff. You know, I've really, I used to look at that a lot and worry about it and think about, man, we got to play this and play that, but you know, you don't have to play one team, Central Florida, and you know, so we're going to worry about that, and uh, I, I tried to coach the kids on that this year, that when we sit in here on the 13th and we see that thing, what, hey, you don't have to worry about anything but winning the first game. The toughest win is always the first one in the NCAA, so that's what we try to really do with our kids, and I think they have that kind of ingrained in them, hopefully, and they're older, and they know that anyway on their own, probably, but... Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to look past that. We want to play well the first game and go from there and see if we can get the, keep the ball rolling like we had the last five games. And quickly, in case you're wondering, University of Central Florida based in Orlando. The Golden Knights are 21-8 and champions of the Trans-America Athletic Conference, but their biggest victories of the season, the best teams they've beaten probably when they beat Stetson twice. They've also lost to Florida, Maine, Samford, and powerhouses Mercer and Georgia State. More from here later on in the show, Ed. Okay, Ken, hopefully we can pull on Coach Katie and some of the players maybe uh, live from Mackey Arena a bit later. Troy, Gene Katie has not had the success that some of the other coaches, particularly the other one in this state, has had uh, down the road in Bloomington in the NCAA tournament. That pressure has got to be building on him. Do coaches pass on that pressure to their players? Did that affect you guys come tournament time? Well, I think as players, we tried to put that pressure upon ourselves. Uh, we thought that the team that we had, we were good enough to make the Final Four. Uh, our last two years at Purdue. I know I talked to Coach Katie uh, two weeks ago that uh, he said that his philosophy is not to totally win the Big Ten. Don't think winning Big Ten, but going in the NCAA tournament and playing well. Yeah, I think that may have helped them down the stretch because even Glenn would have said, uh, did say at some of the post-game news conferences the last couple of weeks, he said, you know, the Big Ten title is important, but we want to make our statement in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, uh, I think just coaches want to get away from that stigma of being that team that constantly doesn't do well in the NCAA tournament and he doesn't want to be the the Arizona the Missouri's uh, who hasn't sure. had too much uh, tournament success either so he's trying to break away from that trend all right thank you when we come back it's IU's turn we'll dissect the IU region and we'll go live to North Manchester to talk about it with IU legend Steve Alford and also bring in Dave Benner and get his comments on IU hoops by the way tickets for Purdue's game Lexington, Kentucky. Get on the phone now. Hit that speed dial. Get that number programmed in. 606-257-1818 or 1-800-928-2287. Drive to the Hive continues after a quick time. Double A tournament pairing special tonight. Let's welcome in Steve Alford, one of the men who led IU to the national championship back in 87. For the last uh, couple of years, the red-hot young coach at Manchester College up there in North Manchester. Steve, how you doing? Just fine, Ed. What do you think? about uh, IU's season real quickly and uh, what they've got facing them coming up in the East Regional. Well, I think uh, David's mentioned it before. There's, a, there's an awful lot of uncertainty right now in Bloomington. I, I think there's some very good talent there. Uh, there's just a, an awful lot of uncertainty on the injuries. Uh, what's going to happen? Is Damon okay? Uh, they cannot continue to play in the tournament without a healthy Damon Bailey. There's an awful lot of people that can be injured on that team, uh, but Damon is not one of them. They've got to have a healthy Damon Bailey. And I think a big key in this tournament run for Indiana is going to be um, how much Pat Graham's going to get a play. I, I think when he's played instrumental minutes, uh, they've been very, very competitive. And as long as they're healthy, I think you're going to see a team that could still make some noise in this national tournament. Well, let's take a look at what IU is destined for when they play their first round game at the East Regional back in Landover, Maryland. Here's a look. And David Benner, you've uh, been covering the Hoosiers all year for the Indianapolis Star. What do you make of IU's lot in the tournament? Well, I think the best thing that happened to him was that they get to play Friday. When Steve mentioned the injuries, and Damon Bailey in particular, he's got a pulled muscle, he's got a hip pointer, he's got tendonized in his knees, Evans has had back spasms, Pat Graham's foot is sore. They get a week off, uh, and that's something that will be key for them because they can rest up a little bit, they can get ready. And, of course, you know, as everybody knows, you give Coach Knight a week to prepare for a team, he'll be good. And I think Indiana, like Steve says, if they can get healthy, if they can get all these aches and pains taken care of, they can, they can win the two games this weekend. They can go on to the regional. Uh, but again, the injuries are going to be the key thing, and I don't think we'll know until Friday exactly how healthy they are. 
Steve, you see Carolina there, the number one seed back there. How do you think the East Regional breaks down? Carolina, a lot of people thought they'd be basically invincible this year going into the season. They do have enormous talent, but obviously they lost six times, didn't even win the ACC, so that's got to be wide open. Well, I think from Indiana's standpoint, you couldn't ask for a better draw. Uh, uh, as David said, they, get, they don't have to play till Friday. Uh, they're playing the MAC winner, who's uh, they've got an outstanding player, but he's a young player. Um, I think they're, they're capable of, as he said, getting by the first two rounds. And if they do that and get on a roll and get their confidence going again and now get some more time to get healthy, uh, Indiana's had an awful lot of success against North Carolina. Dean Smith has an unbelievable system. Uh, I saw it firsthand. Uh, we had no business beating the Michael Jordan team in 84, um, and we really were able to do it uh, really within the last 10 minutes with some quite ease. And, and I think it's all in Coach Knight's preparation. If anybody knows Coach Smith's system, uh, it's Coach Knight. So if they can get to that game, um, a lot of good things could happen. There's been some controversy regarding Eric Montrose. Marty Blake, one of the scouting gurus for the NBA, said he's basically a Greg Dryling when it comes to what he expects from him in the pros. He has had a rather disappointing senior season. His numbers have been down. What do you make of the, the kid from Indy here, Eric Montrose? Well, that's tough. I, I don't know the situation uh, all that well. Uh, I know he's had a fabulous career, and there are probably uh, 300 coaches in the country that would love to have Eric Montrose as their center. Uh, you got a fabulous freshman in there that's getting big-time numbers and, and really coming into his own. Uh, he's on a very good team. Uh, they're coming off a national championship. Anytime you do that, uh, it's, it's very difficult. You win a big game, it's very difficult to get up for the next game. So uh, I'm sure, Eric, with the junior year that he had, uh, it's hard to continue at that same level because now everybody prepares for you sure. uh, even more so. Yeah. And everybody's made such a big deal out of North Carolina's size. And when you think of their size, the first guy that comes to mind right. is Eric. John McLeod, let's go back to you up there in South Bend. Uh, how do you assess that East region in particular? I use chances. Coach Knight obviously has shown over the years that he's one of the two or three greatest tournament coaches ever. Well, every time you see a, a Indiana team coached by Bobby Knight, you know they're going to be well prepared, as Steve said. I, I think the key uh, for Indiana, number one, is their ability to stay, to get healthy and stay healthy through the tournament and then to be able to shoot the ball well you, you know they're going to defend and they're going to battle on the defensive end but i think the key is their ability to to make these shots uh, their best when they get ahead and force the opponent to play catch up mm -hmm. and when they do that it's uh, very very difficult to catch iu okay coach thanks very much now when we come back we will run down the other two regions in the nc2a but first iu fans get your pens and paper ready here is the number you need to follow the Hoosiers to the first and second round. And I've just been told that the action in Landover, Maryland is a sellout already. So put those pens and papers back in the drawer. <laughs> we'll be back with more on Drive to the Hive after this timeout. Sold out already. Right. Drive to the Hive, our NCAA tournament pairing show. Now let's take a look at the other two brackets. We've already shown you the Southeast, where Purdue is the top seed, and the East, where Carolina is the top seed, and IU is the number five seed. Let's call in Steve Alford again. Steve, uh, Arkansas is the number one seed in the Midwest region. They probably held down the top spot in the polls more than any other team this year. What are your feelings as you look over the brackets for the Midwest? Well, I like Arkansas coming out of the Midwest. Uh, obviously, it's easy to say when we talk about a number one seed, but they have played extremely well. They've been very consistent all year. I think they're a deep team. Uh, they've got good people up front. They've got a good backcourt. I think Nolan Richardson's done a good job of getting this program developed. And I think this is the year that he's really looked for. And I think when you look at the brackets, um, this really shapes up the, and forms up very well for Arkansas to make a good run at it. Okay, let's look at the rest of the Midwest brackets right there. UMass, Troy Lewis's dark horse pick, is uh, the number two seed there. Now, Coach McLeod, as we take a look at the brackets out west, where Mizzou, out of the Big Eight, is your number one seed, what do you think about uh, this particular set of teams? Well, you, you know, Missouri has played very well, except, uh, instead of going into the tournament uh, this way, <laughs> right. they're, they're sliding a little bit. They just barely got by uh, Nebraska at home. They just got by Colorado, and then they were, they were upset. So Missouri may be going into it, uh, not like Purdue, who's going in red hot. Missouri may be stumbling a little bit at the wire. So there's a possibility in this bracket that this thing may open up. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, other half of the bracket out there. The two-seed Arizona, Lute Olson, has not had much success recently in the NCAA tournament. He got his Iowa team to the Final Four at one time. In fact, here in 1980, and also he took Arizona to the Final Four. I believe it was 1988 in Kansas City. But 
that will be very interesting to see what happens there. Okay, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we will go live to West Lafayette, hopefully to speak with the coach of the undisputed kings of the Big Ten, Gene Katie. Go live to Mac Arena and have more for you on Drive to the Hive after this time. Out. The news is sponsored in part by Dodge. The mid-sized Dodge Dakota Sport V6 gives you a bigger bed than Ford Ranger or Chevy S10. It gives you a Magnum engine with more horsepower than their base V6s. The safety of available... We're going to go to West Lafayette live here in just a second to hear from one of the uh, assistant coaches, Bruce Weber, who's done such a fine job along with Gene Cady in bringing the Big Ten title to Mackey Arena this year. But first of all, David, I want to get your thoughts on IU's first-round opponent, Ohio U. Of course, Ball State fans know them well. They beat them three times, including mm -hmm. in the MAC tourney. Gary Trent's outstanding. We've got some videotape queued up of the Bobcats. What's your assessment? Well, Trent's a great player, and again, with Indiana, a week to prepare for a great player like that, I think will be a little bit too much. He, he'll, I mean, yesterday against Wisconsin, Indiana had their best defensive effort of the year, and they held the three leading scores for Wisconsin to 25 points below their average. I think you'll see the same thing with Ohio. I don't. I think he'll get a fair amount of points. I don't think he'll shoot well, and I just think that Indiana's defense will actually be good in the tournament where it hasn't been good in the season. Okay, Troy, now we want to talk about Purdue's first-round opponent in the southeast, and that's going to be uh, the University of Central Florida out of Orlando. I don't know anything about them. You may not either, but uh, how do you feel? I, I mean, they've got to have heard and read so much about Glenn Robinson. That's got to be very difficult for a little school like that. Yeah, they've got to be uh, intimidated a bit. Yeah, I think that's who they're going to gear their whole defense against. Obviously, every team's going to do that, but uh, I'm pretty sure Coach Katie and the coaching staff will have a lot of film on Central Florida by the time. We've got uh, some right here. They're in the white, by the way, against Stetson. Uh, they'll have some films on, but I think what Coach Katie want to go in in the tournament is just prepare his team to uh, come out and play well and not to have any slippage uh, of their game playing against the 16th seed. Okay. Central Florida against Purdue, Ohio U against IU in the Southeast and East Regionals, respectively, later on this week. Okay, let's go on up live now to Mackey Arena in West Lafayette. Rejoin Ken Tomash, who has been joined, as I understand it. Yes, there he is, Bruce Weber, one of... Coach Katie's uh, fine assistants. Can't take it away. Uh, Bruce, do you know anything at all about Central Florida? Because not a lot of people here do. Well, we know a little bit about them. They have a first-year coach. Uh, used to be an uh, assistant at Florida. Took over the job uh, this past year. And uh, they're in the Trans-American Conference. Uh, they got, I think, 21 wins. They won their tournament, the league tournament, at, at home, so which was an advantage for them. But they had a, a very good year. They have some very good athletes, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, kids. Um, a player that transferred from Miami of Florida, who's a very good scorer, was one of the leading scorers in Florida when he came out of high school. Now, you've been around this program long enough. You've had number one seed teams before. Is there a difference this year, Big Ten champions? You go in on a roll, five in a row, nine in the last ten? Well, I think the biggest difference is that um, we are much more relaxed. I think when Troy played uh, both years, when Troy's junior and senior year, we were just, every game was so intense, like the nine, last nine games. I think we were just worn out by the end of the season. And this year, we've taken a whole different approach to it. We've cut practice down. Uh, this group, we haven't overwhelmed them at all. If anything, we've kept it very simple. And I, and, and I think they've, they're just much more relaxed uh, going into this. The more relaxed Boilermakers take on the University of Central Florida. That's Thursday in Lexington. Bruce Weber, good luck. I hope the relaxed approach works. Get, get that zen going, and uh, maybe it'll pay off for the Boilermakers. Let's go back to Troy Lewis uh, down in the studio. Troy? Well, I think Coach Weber uh, hit on a very good point. Uh, we did go into the tournament uh, thinking that we can win the uh, national We're title. Thank you. I think this year they, they feel that they can win it, but they're not very sure about their ability, except for obviously Glenn. And uh, I think if Consul Martin does a good job and support Glenn, then they can have a very good run in the tournament. All right, let's put these guests on the spot. Let's first of all start with John McLeod up in South Bend. Coach McLeod, I really appreciate you taking time to be with us tonight. Before you take off, your final four picks. Uh, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to say that, uh, that Missouri is going to get upended. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, with Massachusetts, okay. uh, Carolina. Okay. Uh, I don't have the brackets in front of me, so it's very difficult for me to, to, uh, to see all the teams. I would I would uh, I would go with the Arkansas of course, so that leaves me shy uh, shy of one. The East? No, the uh, the Southeast. The Southeast. Which would be uh, Carolina? Is is that right? Carolina's in the East. Purdue's the number one seed in the Southeast. I would take uh, Purdue. So th those would be my picks. That's a great answer on this show too, Coach. Hey, thanks a bunch <laughs> for your time. Let's kick it over to uh, North Manchester. Steve Alford, your final four picks. 
Uh, I'll take Arkansas. Uh, I like Arizona this year. Lute's a, a great guy. He's been had a great history as a coach. I think they're going to get thir things turned around, so I'll go with Arizona. Um, I, the Southeast, uh, how do you pick a team out there? you got four, four number one teams. Uh, Purdue's the number one seed, and they're the only team not to be ranked number one this year. All so right. I don't know how you can pick out of there. Uh, and I like UConn coming out of the middle. Uh, I think it's the East. Yeah, I like okay. UConn. Hey, Steve, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. These Thank two you. guys will give their final four picks tonight on Sports Nuts. We're out of time. Don't have time for that. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you on the drive to the Hive in Charlotte as we leave you. Here's a look at the 94 Big Ten champs, the Boilermakers of Purdue. We don't have time for that either. Good night, everybody. <laughs>